Greetings and salutations. Today we will be covering the perplexing disappearance of Frederico Tavares. This takes place deep in the heart of Mexico's organized crime syndicates. It was 2013 when Argentinian Frederico Tavares was supposedly pursuing his passion for the culinary arts and would vanish without a trace, leaving behind a cloud of suspicion and unanswered questions. Tavares was last seen on the fateful day of the 5th of June in the city of Guadalajara, having embarked on a journey within Puerto Vallarta. His whereabouts and to the extent of being missing, his well-being became an enigma which perplexes investigators. The final thread of a connection to Frederico came in the form of a phone call made to a friend just 30 minutes after his last sighting. In said call, he supposedly expressed trepidation, revealing that he was delivering a car on the behalf of his boss. However, he felt a chilling sense of fear and disorientation due to being unsure of his exact location. The subsequent weeks revealed a startling discovery Frederico's abandoned vehicle, which would become a crucial piece of evidence, emerged in the neighboring region of Michoacan. The implications of this were rather grim. It suggested the potential involvement of organized crime in this mysterious vanishing. It must be noted that Gerardo Gonzalez Valencia, the very same owner of the restaurant where Frederico worked, would later find himself behind bars for charges of money laundering. As the investigations deepened, Gerardo's alleged ties to drug drug trafficking and his supposed prominent position within the notorious new generation cartel would come to light. Yet, despite these extensive efforts in both searching for Frederico and questioning his former boss about any potential involvement in the disappearance, all these efforts would yield no results. His fate remains an enigma, a void which carries the weight of unsolved secrets, in part due to no trace of his existence being uncovered, almost as if he had vanished into thin air. This has left authorities grappling with both despair and frustration, delving into statements about Frederico's background paints a picture of a man driven by passion and a supposed insatiable wanderlust. Born in Guanajuato, Argentina, on February the 23rd in 1976, Frederico was affectionately known as Fede or Gordo within his circle of friends and family. He would grow up in the Formosa province where he would meet his wife Carolina and eventually embark on a journey to Buenos Aires for his studies. Frederico was reportedly a man of varied interests, indulging in everything from travel, beach adventures, and a ardent devotion to his soccer team. In 2009, Frederico made a life-changing decision to leave his homeland and embrace the vibrant culinary scene within Mexico. Drawn to the enchanting coastal city of Puerto Vallarta, he found himself immersed in the flavors of the region. His talent as a chef would soon be recognized and he would become the culinary mastermind at Hotelito Desconocido, an exclusive banquet hotel. Additionally, Frederico lent his expertise to the Nudoki Sushi Bar, an Asian restaurant nestled in the heart of Puerto Vallarta. It was within these establishments that an intricate web of connections unfolded, leading to Frederico gravitating towards the orbit of Gerardo González Valencia. Intriguingly, both the Hotelito Desconocido and the Nudoki Sushi Bar were under the ownership of Gerardo, a figure who held significant influence within Los Guinas, a faction linked with the notorious New Generation Cartel. This is in part due to the complexity of the Mexican drug war, an ongoing battle between criminal organizations and the government. This would set the stage for the potential hidden truth behind Frederico's disappearance. They would meet through a mutual acquaintance, an Argentinian dentist who resided in Mexico. Frederico encountered Gerardo, whose wife Wendy managed the Hotelito Desconocido. Eager to expand his culinary horizons, Frederico heeded Gerardo's invitation to join the sushi bar. Enticed by the prospect of co-owning the business, he would gladly join. However, unbeknownst to Frederico, his path had intersected and led him into the realm of organized crime. 
and as some allegations suggest, Gerardo sought to secure his silence regarding a potential illicit incident he witnessed involving the new generation cartel. The search for Frederico continues to this day, and investigators strive to find anything that would lead them to either Frederico himself or his remains. As the perplexing case of Frederico unfolded, details surrounding his disappearance would become increasingly shrouded in uncertainty and suspicion. Frederico's final communication occurred precisely at 12.32 p.m. on the fateful day of January the 5th, 2013, when he engaged in a conversation with Veronica Roman, a friend of his from Argentina. During this ominous call, Frederico disclosed that he was undertaking a favor for Gerardo González Valencia involving the transportation of a vehicle from Puerto Vallarta to Guadalajara, accompanied by an exchange for another vehicle of his boss's preference. Disturbingly enough, Frederico expressed his disorientation and fear, revealing that he lacked the knowledge of the exact whereabouts and found the situation deeply unsettling. Regrettably, those words would be the last Veronica would hear from him. Piecing together Frederico's final movements, it is revealed that he departed from Puerto Vallarta in the early hours of the morning, embarking on a journey that would prove to lead to his untimely undoing. Upon arriving in Guadalajara, he encountered a man named Rogelio, commonly known as Rocky, who was also an Argentinian. Subsequently, Frederico arranged a meeting with a close friend of Gonzalez at a local tobacco shop in order to discuss plans for the upcoming birthday celebration of Gonzalez's daughter. Surveillance footage from the store's very security camera captured Frederico leaving the premises at approximately noon. Little did anyone know that this would be the final recorded moments of his very existence. Another half an hour later, and Frederico made the proverbial phone call to Veronica from a location that investigators have chosen to withhold from the public for reasons hereto unexplained. The circumstances surrounding the undisclosed location further fuel speculation and rise troubling questions about the intentions and actions of those involved, both in the act and in the investigation itself. In the eyes of Frederico's family, the pieces of this dark puzzle point to a meticulously orchestrated trap masterminded by Gerardo Gonzalez himself. The intricate web of relationships, business ventures, and potential criminal activities woven around Federico formed a sinister backdrop against which his fate was sealed. The gravity of Federico's disappearance did not go unnoticed, as concerned friends and co-workers took swift action. On June 10th, one of Federico's colleagues and confidants would go on to approach the Mexican authorities officially reporting his sudden and unexplained absence. The report was lodged in both Guadalajara and Puerto Vallarta, marking Frederico as the first Argentinian national to disappear under mysterious circumstances within the borders of Mexico, potentially for quite some time. As days turned into weeks, hope gradually gave way into despair as investigators struggled to unravel the truth concealed within Frederico's bewildering vanishing act. Then, on June 19th, there was a glimmer of hope as potential evidence emerged. An abandoned vehicle was discovered in La Piedad, a city situated approximately 103 miles east of Guadalajara and in close proximity to the border of Jalisco. The vehicle, a 2009 Dodge Caliber bearing San Luis Postal state license plates had been left in a neighborhood near the city center. Despite an intensive examination, authorities found no traces of blood or any indications of outright violence within the Avadan vehicle. Furthermore, the search yielded no substantive evidence capable of shedding light on the perplexing case. Recovery of Frederico's vehicle prompted a collaboration between the state authorities in Michoacan and their counterparts in Jalisco. The vehicle itself remained under custody of the Michoacan officials, quickly becoming a tangible reminder of a mystery which continues to elude resolution. Stringing the depths of speculation, friends of Frederico took to social media, sharing images of the vehicle and emphasizing the ownership by a Colombian national, now publicly identified as Gerardo González Valencia, the very same individual who owned the restaurants which employed Frederico. The tendrils of uncertainty tightened their grip 
on this haunting enigma as the search for Frederico pressed onwards. Eager to unravel the truth, investigators sought to navigate the labyrinthian depths of Tobares associations and unravel the secrets which may be the key to his disappearance. The investigation into the disappearance of Frederico opened a labyrinth of leads and potential motives, further entangling the mystery of his disappearance in uncertainty. On June 14, 2013, Gilsoka authorities formally initiated an inquiry to locate Frederico, acknowledging the gravity of the situation. Concurrently, the Argentine consular officials lodged a formal request to collaborate with Jalsico authorities, signifying the international significance of this case. As the investigation progressed, two initial leads were explored but ultimately discarded, leading investigators grasping for elusive answers. Firstly, authorities dismissed the notion that Frederico had deliberately severed ties with loved ones, opting to vanish voluntarily. Testimony from his friends revealed his plans to visit Sayulta and Tepic, indicating a desire for exploration rather than a calculated abandonment. Moreover, the existence of Frederico's passport and other essential documents coupled with his active pursuit of enjoyment in Guadalajara casts doubt upon the theory of voluntary disappearance. The investigator's assessment highlighted the improbability of Frederico willingly going into hiding or severing communications with those closest to him. The second lead explored and ultimately discarded revolved around the possibility of Frederico being kidnapped for ransom. It must be noted that the absence of any communication from potential abductors seeking monetary compensation greatly diminished the plausibility of this scenario. In order to gather further evidence, investigators monitored Frederico's bank accounts, scrutinizing any activity following his disappearance. Examination of his social media presence uncovered activity on Facebook, being a profile picture change on May 28th, just days before vanishing. This digital breadcrumb led investigators to a chilling hypothesis. Frederico may have been unknowingly recruited as a cook for a drug lord's clandestine gathering or event. Unaware of the nefarious figures he would be catering to, investigators postulated that at some point Frederico might have stumbled upon something significantly more sinister than he could have expected, inadvertently placing himself directly in harm's way. Alternatively, Conflicts or personal grievances at these exclusive gatherings could have precipitated his abduction. Furthermore, investigators considered the possibility of rival gang members seizing Frederico as a pawn in a retaliatory message to his employers as part of a larger intergang feud. Testimonies from Frederico's family unveiled a disheartening decline in his enthusiasm for work in the months leading up to his disappearance. He confided in his sister, expressing fears and calling her in moments of distress, even sobbing during one of these conversations. In March 2013, Frederico would speak to his sister, stating his desire to return to Argentina. These revelations led the family to believe that his abduction was motivated by a chilling discovery he potentially could have made while working, something his employers may have desired to keep concealed. Frederico had been employed at the Hotelito Desconocido and the Nudoki Sushi Bar. It must be noted that he also worked as a hired chef for private parties, including those organized by the New Generation Cartel, who were supposedly tied to his final employer. His family informed investigators that Frederico would occasionally be taken by the New Generation Cartel to secluded areas in western Mexico where he would cater to their exclusive events. During this time on the islands, Frederico was prohibited from leaving and he was also forbidden from using his cell phone, which was a rather unsettling restriction. In light of the circumstances, Frederico's family posited that he may have witnessed something deeply suspicious during one of the private parties and subsequently sought answers from third parties. Adding to the list of rather peculiar events was that a week before his disappearance, Gerardo allegedly ordered Frederico to shutter the sushi restaurant and terminate all employees, which was a rather ominous directive that deepens the sense of foreboding surrounding the case. Frederico's active presence on various social media platforms did offer investigators glimpses into 
into his personal life, which included regular Facebook updates, constant use of both Instagram and YouTube, which showcased his journeys through Jalsico along with Michoclan. His visual chronicles also encompassed his work in prestigious hotels along with upscale restaurants, opulent yachts along with the secretive realm of the private parties he was employed in. At. One particular Facebook post from 2011 captured Frederico alongside a companion in a restaurant kitchen, and within the picture, his companion can be seen concealing a Colt Gold Cup pistol within his waistband. His friends would voice concern and apprehension in the comments, warning Frederico to remain cautious. Another image shared on his Instagram in 2013 showcased a tattoo depicting a figure wearing a gas mask in the accompanying description, Frederico attributed the tattoo to a man of key importance in Sinaloa. However, his YouTube videos seemed to chronicle his travels through towns and highways of Jalsico, further informing the authorities of Frederico's knowledge of the general area he was in. In the aftermath of Frederico Torbares' disappearance, a wave of reactions surged igniting a fervent desire for answers. The Argentinian embassy in Mexico City swiftly would respond issuing a communique with detailed information about Frederico's vanishing and urging individuals with any leads to come forward. According to the embassy's statement, Frederico was last seen in Guadalajara's Jardines del Bosque neighborhood. Particular descriptives were provided, portraying him as 5 foot 10 or 1 0.77 meters tall, weighing approximately 181 pounds or approximately 82 kilograms, with white skin, freckles, and brown hair. Notably, Frederico possesses a distinct tattoo adorning his legs and shoulder. Collaborating with Jalisco's Ministry of Public Service, the embassy worked in tandem with authorities, ensuring regular updates for Frederico's family and consular officials, fostering an atmosphere of cooperation and shared determination to unravel the mystery. The search for Frederico echoed throughout the digital realm as well, with family members and friends harnessing the power of social media, creating Facebook pages such as Encontraremos a Frederico Tovares, which translates to the English, Let's Find Frederico Tovares. This platform served as a hub for posting investigation updates, sharing images of Frederico's interactions with his friends, and relaying support from a broader community invested in uncovering the truth. Furthermore, poignant videos were uploaded, imploring individuals to join in the collective efforts to locate Frederico. The relentless pursuit for answers reverberated across the borders as Frederico's cousin and family spokesperson Lisa Berzotti took to national television in Argentina, raising awareness and seeking assistance upon his perplexing disappearance. As the days turned into weeks, new developments emerged, further fueling the quest for truth. On June 21st, Ana Soledad, Frederico's sister, embarked on a journey to Mexico in order to collaborate directly with investigators. She was determined to play an active role in the search for her brother. She emerged with the Argentinian ambassador, Diego Antonio Garces, and joined forces with the Mexican Federal Police, uniting efforts to unearth any clues that could lead to Frederico's whereabouts. Recognizing the potential challenges posed by corruption within the Mexican investigative circles, the family sought to mitigate the risks by enlisting the Mexican National Human Rights Commission to conduct a parallel investigation. Their intention in doing so was to ensure a thorough examination of the case while safeguarding the integrity of the search. The impassioned pursuit for answers manifested in a public demonstration on July the 7th, as the people of Guadalajara organized a march for missing individuals in Jalisco. The march culminated at the city's iconic monument, La Minerva, with Frederico's photograph prominently displayed as a poignant symbol of hopes for his safe return. Despite the determined efforts, a sense of frustration lingered as Frederico's family voiced their concerns regarding a perceived 
lack of interest, and slow progress from the local authorities. His cousin expressed disappointment, emphasizing the crucial significance of the initial days of investigation following Frederico's initial disappearance. The family believed that the timely investigation of leads during this crucial period could have greatly enhanced the chances of locating Frederico. It was only after the pressure from both the Argentine and Mexican governments that the case gained any momentum, progressing in a matter that aligned with the family's desired approach. Ana Soledad acknowledged her shock at the prevalence of kidnappings and disappearances in Mexico, expressing gratitude to the municipal, state, and federal officials who remained dedicated to the case. Significant developments linked to entities involved in his last known employment. This would be on August 19th, 2015, when the United States Treasury's Office of Foreign Assets Control imposed sanctions on 15 Mexican businesses, including the Hotelito Desconocido, which was under the purview of the Foreign Narcotics Kingpin Designation Act, also known as the Kingpin Act. The sanctions highlighted the Hotelito Desconocido's alleged role as a front for money laundering and providing financial and material support for Los Ruines, who are a notorious criminal organization, and its leader, Abigail Gonzalez Valencia, who is the brother of Frederico's employer, Geraldo. Sanctions froze all of the Hotelitos Desconocidos assets within the United States, effectively prohibiting any business transactions involving U.S. citizens. The reach of the sanctions extended to six individuals with affiliations to Los Cuines. On the same day, coordinated efforts between Mexican federal agents and the Secretariat of Finance and Public Credit seized the Hotelito Desconocidos assets, effectively shutting it down following a formal request and exchange of information with the U.S. officials. Another significant turn in events occurred on April 21st, 2016, when Geraldo was apprehended in Montevideo, Uruguay, by the National Police of Uruguay. This arrest was the result of an extensive money laundering probe involving Latin American officials and the U.S. government. The investigation uncovered Geraldo's connection to numerous shell companies he had used in order to acquire assets both within the Americas and abroad. The revelations emerged from the massive information leak known as the Panama Papers, a disclosure that sent shockwaves throughout the international community. In the wake of Geraldo's arrest, Frederico's family addressed the media, sharing their experiences during the investigation. They recounted encountering obstacles in Mexico, particularly during the transition of Argentine consular authority, which led to delays and disruptions in the case. In their ongoing pursuit of answers, Frederico's family has intensified their presence on social media platforms. However, they would soon experience unsettling encounters with individuals suspected to be associated with Gerardo, who claimed to have information about Frederico's whereabouts or asserted his presence in Mexico. Ana Soledad recounted a disturbing incident where she was approached by someone claiming to be Gerardo, expressing a desire to speak with her. She declined the encounter, emphasizing that their singular focus was solely to locate Frederico and bring him back to his loved ones. A plea from the family which resonated with a simple yet poignant message. They yearned for knowledge, even if shared anonymously, about Frederico's location, desiring nothing more than his safe return. Tragically, as of yet, the enigma surrounding Frederico Tovares' disappearance has persisted to this day. If you have remained with me until the end, I thank you, and I do hope you stay tuned and subscribe for more content.